Since it was announced last year, a lot of people have been dying to know if Odin is good for emulation. It is. How's it going everyone, Taki here. This is my second planned video on the new Odin Pro handheld. As promised, we're gonna take a deep dive into what this thing is capable of when it comes to emulation. As a brief recap, the device that I'm using is the Pro model with eight gigabytes of LP ddr 4 x RAM, but the thing that matters the most for us is the 787 megahertz overclock that both the Odin and the Odin Pro take advantage of. People wanted some pricing information on this device, which is kind of difficult since this thing sold for so many different prices depending on when you got in. This device initially sold for as low as $240 for the Odin Pro model and $199 for the base for those that backed the campaign when it originally launched. Those models are now priced at $289 for the Odin Pro and $240 for the Odin base, but I assume those prices will increase again to their full retail prices after the campaign is completely done. As you already saw from the 60 plus games featured in the intro, Odin is a very powerful handheld that can handle just about anything that you can throw at it. In this video, we're going to see just how far we can push this thing across a range of different systems. Just like my last video, you are going to be able to see the complete system stats on the device's screen for each game in this video. I want to draw your attention to the CPU temp, GPU frequency, and the battery current throughout this video. This will tell you how much headroom the GPU has for any game that I'm testing, as well as the amount of power that I'm using and how well the fan is working. For this entire video, I have the brightness set to 100% and I'm using the high performance mode, which allows me to use the 787 megahertz overclock. I'm coupling this with the smart fan curve setting, so I'm using the least amount of battery possible to get good performance. Additionally, you can find any relevant game options or rendering resolutions on the lower left corner of your screen throughout this video. We are going to break this video up into sections with a system recap at the end, going over the average battery life for the system based on the games tested. The second system that we're going to take a look at is PS1. For this system, I'm using the Duck Station emulator with the rendering resolution set to 1080p, widescreen hacks turned on, and PGXP enabled. Next up, we have N64 with the Mupin 64 Plus GLES 3 core with the 720p widescreen adjusted setting. I think these games look amazing in 16x9. The fourth system that we're testing is Nintendo DS with the Drastic Emulator. I have the high resolution 3D setting applied and I have screen swap mapped to one of my buttons.
let's move on to a bigger system. Here we have Dreamcast with the Flycast core. I have the resolution set to 1440p to maximize the screen, and I'm using widescreen hacks. These games look amazing on this device with these settings. Another great system on Odin is PSP. Here is PPSSPP with the OpenGL backend and the resolution set to 4x native to max out the screen. You'll see the GPU overclock putting in some work for several of these titles. Fight! 
3DS is not a system that I think Odin handles particularly well, which is something that I think you could say for most Android devices and phones. For this, we're using the Citra Enhanced Emulator, but there really is no difference between this and official Citra from what I can see. There are quite a few 3DS games that run well on this device, but they have graphical issues that distract you from play. You are still probably better off with a real 3DS with the current state of things. <laughs> Now we're ready to move on to the final three systems, and this is where things get very interesting for this device. The first system that we're going to take a look at is GameCube using the Dolphin MMJR emulator. Unless stated otherwise, all of the games are set to 1080p with the widescreen hack enabled. With the exception of F-Zero GX, I did not do anything special for any game in this section. These were all set and forget it after a minute of configuring the emulator.
Our second big system is Nintendo Wii with the same Dolphin emulator. Donkey Kong Country Returns is the only game in this section that I applied any custom settings to. Everything else was plug and play. Wow! 
Our last system is PS2 with the Ether SX2 emulator. For almost all the games in this section, I kept the emulator at the values that I got using the fast preset in the new user wizard with the overclock set to 0 and 0 unless stated otherwise. I did not increase the rendering resolution for any game in this section. I filmed 22 games for this final part and it would have been an unwieldy mess with how much work went into the rest of this video.
launcher against that vehicle. To select weapons, hold triangle and select an icon with the left analog stick. Hold L1 to precisely target your weapon. Let's do a final recap. There were over 60 games featured in this video and another 60 games featured in the intro with a little overlap between the two. Hopefully you have a good idea of what Odin Pro is capable of after everything that you saw here. If you still have any questions about emulation on the Odin Pro, as always, feel free to leave them down below and take a look at my first video on the Odin Pro if you haven't already. We still have a Windows Showcase coming up and you are not going to want to miss it, so make sure to get subscribed. Happy gaming everyone, Takiel.